You're going to the water with something, some kind of issues, some kind of weight, could even be good weight, but like nevertheless weight. You never come out the same way. It's kind of that concept of baptism, coming out renewed and revived and raised up. We're in Steubenville, Texas. This is the cowboy capital of the world. This is not where you expect to find an outdoor shop. It looks like a Rexall drug building from the outdoors. And then when you come in, you definitely don't expect to see me running it, owning it. But I love that about it. It hopefully removes preconceived notions. Slim Pickens Outfitters. It's not afraid to show its uniqueness. It's kind of like the water, right? A renewed experience to walk in one way and leave another, to be encouraged to take some weightiness off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mom, who's that? We did not start out Maybe. with the knowledge that we're the first Black-owned outdoor gear shop. And still sometimes we're like, that That just can't be. But okay, now that we're here, and now that that is, how are we helping diversify that outdoor community, but also the outdoor industry that we are now a part of? And how can we support others? Okay, we're the first, but we won't be the last. The outdoors and the water has been weaponized for too long because there have been people that have been self-ascribed gatekeepers. If you don't fit this profile, if you don't have these attributes, well then I can question with my self-ascribed authority what you're doing here. You were told you didn't belong or you had limited access. What that starts to mean to people is like, oh, well then like it's not mine or I don't belong here. Why would I feel responsible for it? We don't need any gatekeepers in the outdoors. We sure don't need it with water. Yeah, that pops. Loxley James Dawes, a powerful father, amazing husband, loving granddad. Yesterday, got to share my love and my passion of fly fishing with my dad. I mean, he's only seen me do it once, but I never got to experience the water with him right next to me. The man of few words had a lot of words after that. Those words I'll take with me, and not just the words, those moments. The water already renews and restores, but that was so reviving. When you catch a fish, it's so graceful, right? It's poetic. You see it moving in the water and it's showing you like what this water can do, what you can be in the water. And when you bring it out, nothing can match that release for a split millisecond. They're just still and then they take off. I love that minute second, at least for me, I feel like I'm in that safe space with them because it's also my safe space. <laughs> My parents necessarily weren't the type that said, oh, you could be this. It's not so much that they told me they could, they never told me I couldn't. And so like I was able to kind of dream about the things that I just wanted to do and wanted to pursue and be okay with seeing a path in a direction and not being afraid to kind of step off of that. The ability to dream and to be creative, that's what was passed down. I would love to say like, yeah, my kids are gonna inherit the shop. That might not be their passion, and I want them to pursue their passion. But if not them, it'll be there for somebody else who's passionate about it to hopefully pick it up and continue to pursue it. And with my kids and with the people that come into the shop, I want them to see me doing this. Not only see me doing it, seeing me enjoy it, seeing me thrive out here, seeing me be restored out here, like, oh, this is doable. I love the water. I respectively love the water. It's a source of joy, a source of peace. I mean, once you connect with that, once you feel that, no, you're not gonna leave that. Yeah, we're, we're not going anywhere, but we want as many people as possible to, to come out and join us. That's a good one. <laughs>